Hey Taylor, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? All right. Okay, we'll give everybody two more minutes and then we'll go ahead and start. Is that hat? My hat? Yeah. It's the uh, Salt Lake City Bees, so the like minor league team. It's the Abejas. So, gotcha. yeah, they are. They I... often release their. Um, uh, I think they call it like their Hispanic Heritage Collection or something like that. So, because obviously awesome. baseball has deep roots in Latin America. Very cool. So, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're at 9.05. Did you want to run it today, Just Mr. Justice? I was going to call you Justice instead of David. Um, did you want to run it today, uh, David, or did you want me to run it? Uh, indifferent. Um, would anybody else be interested? James uh, or Calvin or perhaps Leah? Hey, I'm watching kids today, so... <laughs> Uh, sorry, I missed it. Was it for the meeting? What? I was just leading the meeting. It's fine. We can. One of us oh. can do it today. It sounds, it sounds like it might be easier. I am more than happy to uh, to do the honors today. Uh, cool. So, hey, welcome everybody. Uh, this is the an instance of uh, Tag Runtime Wasm Working Group. Uh, we uh, operate under the CNCF Code of Conduct. That means please be kind to each other. Um, we uh, want to encourage uh, inclusive discourse. Uh, so please uh, raise your hand. You will be recognized, and you'll have uh, your space to uh, present your your uh, thoughts. Um, with that, is there anyone that would like to say hello, introduce themselves today? I'll give a, a short bit of time if uh, folks are interested. All right. Um, a lot of friendly faces. Uh, just in case, hi, I'm David. If anybody needs anything, please let me know. Raise your hand and I will get to you uh, as quickly as possible. Um, we only have a couple agenda items on the uh, meeting notes. Um, if anybody doesn't have the meeting notes, uh, they are located right here. And uh, if anybody is interested in taking notes, I would, I would love to have a volunteer. Would anybody like to volunteer for that? Uh, yeah, I could do that. 
Thank you so much for that. That's very kind of you. Um, excellent. So why don't we then get started? Uh, looks like a group discussion. The first agenda item is next deliverables to work on as a group. Um, let's see. So <clears throat> the last item was uh, OCI uh, integration. And I think that that has come pretty much towards the end. And uh, it's looking very, looking great. Uh, we've seen solid integration across multiple tool sets. Um, I think there's some work to be done to uh, talk more about it in container D world, but uh, it's it's going quite well. So um, what, what do we wanna take on for the next thing? Um, in previous conversations, we'd had, discussion about white paper on uh, platform engineering. Um, and I'm, I'm curious what others, if others have strong opinions uh, or, or just ideas. It doesn't have to have be fully uh, fleshed out. Any thoughts? Sorry, I'm pulling up the charter right now just to use that as the, um, as the guide for it. So in case people haven't read what our deliverables are according to the charter. I just linked it in chat. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things there. We have standards, tests, and certifications and stuff. And so we started doing some of those. Um, we have, there's a couple in here that look interesting. Um, and to be honest, like I probably won't be able to drive this next, any next big effort because uh, OCI is at its end for some definition of end. Um, but it's, uh, there's the long tail of work to get it all, all landed as Calvin in here well knows, cause he's been helping quite a bit with that. Um, so, um, uh, any big, I can obviously help and review and do all that, but the next couple big things, I'll pro I mean, the next, the next big thing, that next couple ones, the next big thing will be a little bit more difficult for me to do. So it just depends on what some of the interest is here. Um, we've gone through most of the projects in the space and have recordings for that. So it's kind of the publications and presentations part, but we don't we haven't done a white paper like you mentioned. And um, there's the example architectures and demos, which we haven't done, and those could be really interesting. Um, then the other thing is the WebAssembly ecosystem proposals. Now we've been all active, I think, on the WASI cloud stuff, and I'm going to bring up some more of those today. So that's also technically deliverable. Um, that's more one we report back up the to the tag, um, and then. Um, yeah, outside of that, like the other ones are ecosystem updates, which we try to do as much as we can, and then like vertical use cases. So like where like showing it across a whole platform. Um so those are kind of the big things right there. Um did any of those sound interesting to people? I mean, I have some stuff I know that's like going on um that I can I can talk to for some of those deliverables, but just in terms of new things we want to work on as a group as we come out of the summer and we probably have attendance go up again. Um, North American summer, if any of you are South, South, uh, Southern hemisphere. Um, so, um, any thoughts there? Cause that's what we have on those deliverables. I think we get one of them for free. <clears throat> so like the ecosystem updates, um, as long as we are attending uh, KC, NA, EU, or some of those other events, we should be getting updates at those events, uh, whether it be, you know, maintainer track or contributor summit. Um, we should be following up on those deliverables. Um, I have yet to talk to you, uh, Ricardo, or the other uh, tag leads about upcoming ecosystem updates, but I suspect that conversation will start up soon um, for KubeCon North America and Salt Lake. Uh, that's November, right? Yeah, like November 12th through 15th or something like that. And then WasmCon, yeah. for this group, WasmCon's the two days before that. Indeed. So <clears throat> I think those, uh, we'll get that one covered. Um, I don't know that I don't feel strongly about strategies and tests at this point. Um, perhaps as we, I, I don't know. Um, what should we standardize? What should we test? 
is there something there that we should be testing? The biggest thing was really around the OCI stuff. Um, that was one of the bigger gaps that wasn't going to necessarily get filled elsewhere. A lot of the other like standards and tests and stuff are either handled in the WebAssembly org or, or by implementers like the Bytecode Alliance. Um, so I don't think there's something we can do there. Um, of those first couple things, the white paper is the only one thing we can do. But like I know they just updated the white paper guidelines in the TOC. Um, I'd love to do that. I just know that I like. All of us are going to be ramping up for like KubeCon and getting things ready in the next few months. So I just don't know if we'll be able to get that done right now. Um, if someone does have throughput and is interested in it, I think we'd be more than willing as a group to support somebody writing that. But I know that I couldn't just do all that writing right now. There's enough other writing I have to do. Um, but I would love to. I think a white paper seems to make sense. Um, and maybe even more high level than just like WebAssembly in... Um, WebAssembly in a platform engineering because I still think there's a lot of people who don't fully grasp like why WebAssembly is important and the basics of what it is and kind of like explaining like what are the benefits, what are the trade-offs, all the things that we've always talked about anyway and codifying that into a white paper seems like it might be a wise idea if somebody has the time. Um, because like saying like, hey, here's here's the cloud native use cases for Wasm. Here's the different things that are available for it. Here's the trade-offs. Here's the advantages to it. Those kind of things uh, might be really good. But platform engineering might be the way to express that because that's where it gets run. So anyway, just some thinking for people to maybe keep in their brains if nobody's like actively like, I want to write a white paper right now. You know, <clears throat> I have somebody that, I think I have somebody I can engage on that. Um, they're working on a book in this space, and I think it would be a condensation of that into uh, a white paper structure. Um, let me chat with them and, and see if I can get them fired up about that. Um, I, what would people find valuable? Like, I know we're all kind of close to this stuff, but a, a white paper I think is valuable. Um, you know, one thing that comes to mind for, you know, hey, this would be valuable is a actual, like, architecture demos to me would be really valuable. We're actually getting stuff running and working. Like, hey, this is how this should be structured. This is how you should use it. Um, that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know. I run into a lot of folks on a day-to-day -day basis that are like, okay, um, I want to kick the tires, but how do I get moving? How do I, what do I build? Uh, James? Yeah, we can echo that around um, like examples that you can, or use cases that you can integrate into now alongside of whatever you're currently running. Seems like that's where people get stuck. They're like, okay, cool. I can build this little demo app over here, but how do I integrate it into my larger system? Um, and it, that might be platform engineering, but it might also be other um, ways of integrating in into their solutions, uh, like and just use cases for that. So, you know, what I can think of is like um, just like simply like, can you use a WASM um, component for like a a NIP container because it runs faster and goes quicker and it does all the little things you want to do. Um, instead of booting an entire container, could you speed up your current um, deployment in that kind of in that kind of way? Other use cases like that are that are being used today. Yeah, so I I agree with that, James. I think that's really I was trying to think about this over the past week because it really seems like project dependent and trying to get because like so. For example, we've been trying to push with a lot of people who are using Wasm Cloud to publish case studies. And I think we're gonna have another one published here soon. And like case studies are like kind of the way you do that in the CNCF. And I'm not sure like we can have like, I would like, for example, with like Renwazi, it feels like Renwazi should try to get a case study that, that publishes that way and like support from us. But I just don't know how to like do it as like, as this group, if that makes sense, because like how you integrate in with it depends on what kind of tool sets and things you're going to be using. Um, and so I, that's, that's just my, my, 
my, it's an open question. Like, should that just be the trying to encourage people to get some more case studies out there? Um, or is there another way we could maybe do that as a group that I'm not thinking of? So I'm, I'm thinking that we're all the builders and we need some folks involved that are the, the users that can come and help build those use cases. I, I'm not too worried about the platform, like what, what are you using underneath the hood, but like what is the problem set that you're trying to solve? Um, and, and then we could, you could potentially use any tool. Um, and so I, I don't know how to get so the users to show up to here <laughs> or or at maybe maybe we at, we meet them at KubeCon and engage them and um, get them to come tell their story and we can help tell the story in some way. Um, yeah, we've reached out like I know that in Wasm Cloud space we've reached out inside the Wasm Cloud community stuff like in the Wasm Cloud Slack and whatnot and just ask the people um, who've been saying they've been doing stuff and. Most people seem to, especially if they're like an open source centric company, they do, they are involved in it or do a lot of open source. They're generally quite open to doing one of these things. Um, so like that's that's how I would do it. And maybe maybe we could put out a call for like, hey, if you're using it, like come chat with us. Um, I wonder if we could swing some sort of, uh, for lack of a better term, like open office hours. Um, at the uh, at KubeCon somewhere or at WasmCon. Actually, WasmCon would probably be even easier, but some people might not be in at that point. Um, I don't know if, if that's possible to swing. Like space is at a premium and like there's the whole, all the different things of, you know, like all the projects get like spaces and all these things. I don't know if we can get in as a, um, as a working group, but I know we could probably reach out to Tag Runtime and see it. Cause I know sometimes Tag Runtime, like the different tags get like a, some, project pavilion space time. Um, and maybe we could do that and invite people to come chat with us there. I mean, is that an option? I think that's a great option. Um, I'm not sure that folks are gonna be here, but definitely could get some pavilion space. Um, it, I think it makes a lot of sense. At the bare minimum, we could do like a hallway track thing and say like, we're meeting outside like door, whatever, outside the main exhibitor at these hours, like come find us if we need to. But um, we can assign me an action item. I'll reach out to Ricardo and be like, hey, can is this a, are we gonna have a tag runtime booth? Could the working group have a little bit of like, at least some time there, you know, to meet with anybody who's who's interested and just see if they, they'd be down for it. Um, I think that's a good way to maybe find some of these. I also just say anyone who's running any of these projects, reach out to their users. Um, I mean, I can, um, I can share um, the, like if people are interested, I can like put them, if we want to start documenting all the use cases we know of, I, the thing I worry about right now, just like this is me with my, my chair hat on, like I'm pretty sure it's just Wasm Cloud who has them out there right now. So I don't want it to appear that like, it's just like that. And I'd like to have at least one other project a CNCF project on there um, before we do it. But like, I think it might be good to maybe document those and keep them around as quick links for people. Not, but I, like I said, I want to have other projects on there too. Um, the only other thing I'd say is I would love to, um, maybe be more vocal once we get like WASI cloud proposals across the line. So we're getting pretty close to having, actually someone went in from the community um, and added in WASI runtime config and key value into WASM time itself. Um, so that's a pretty big step. I mean, it's still all behind feature flags. So it's not like on by default, but you can enable it with the, the command line flags um, and there's crates for it now. So, um, I would like to, as soon as these things like land or like get towards phase three, which those two that I just mentioned are the most likely, um, I'd like to maybe like make that a, a big deal, like do a blog write up that we put as like a deliverable 
um, because we've all been contributing. Like I think almost everyone on this call has been in at least one of those threads, if not more, um, to have conversations about the different uh, WASI cloud interfaces. And that's been one of those things where we've been providing our voice as like the voice of the CNCF and, and the CNCF users to what the needs are there. So I think that would just be, that'd just be a short like blog post thing at the end. But I did want, I was just, that just popped in my head as an idea as well. So I think between those two things, that's a pretty, that's a pretty good, like it's not too heavy of work, um, but if anyone like James, if you find some of the Renwazi and other people who are doing, anyone who's using it and wants to do a case study, like I can walk you through the the steps of how to get that out there um, because we've done a bunch. So, and anyone else who's doing, anyone else with CNCF projects um, would love to to help out with that if I can. Um, I can get you connected with the right people essentially. Um, but yeah. Um, I don't think they're cut yet, Calvin. Calvin asked for the recording later. Um, do you have a link to those WASM, the WASI Cloud WASM time crates? Um, I don't think they're out in the crates yet, but they are in the WASM time repo. Um, so, same time. Where is the repo at? There we go. So, repo, and it is in crates, I believe. WASI. Wazi runtime config and Wazi key value are in the crates. Let me pull those out into the link. Yeah. So there's Wazi runtime. They're all under crates. Wazi runtime config and Wazi key value are there. Um, yeah, I'll provide an update on those in a second. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Just re-looking at this list. I don't know if anyone else had any ideas that came to them as we were chatting through this. So the those two interfaces are those targeted for zero two point zero point two point two release. Let's go into the Wazi Cloud update. Um, so <laughs> since I'm on it, um, great okay, transfer. So, wow, what a seamless transfer there. Um, okay, so uh, with. Here is my suspicion right now. I'm almost certain Wazi runtime config will get in because that thing is so simple and so obviously needed that like that there's not going to be a real problem with that. I don't think. Um, I would like to get support. Um, I am curious, like James from like the run Wazi side, if that can be something that like is enabled by default, especially since now it's a crate over there, like in the run Wazi side, because then we can say, okay, Wasm Cloud implements it by default, wa run Wasi implements it by default. So we have the two implementations that run across multiple systems here, and then we can um, use that to move to phase three. So that's my my guess there. Um, Wasi key value, we're doing one last set of changes here. Someone um, called out that uh, a change that needed to be made in listing keys, which will be a breaking change, so that's why we have drafts. Um, and then a, uh, a new edition of a compare and swap interface. So I have a PR for that, which let me open that up and share it. Um, I might do one more PR that does, um, oh no, not this one, I was thinking of another one. This should be the last one we need for key values. Um, I'm curious on people's thoughts around the, um, compare and swap operation. And I'd highly recommend checking out the linked issue in there because that linked issue um, has more conversation around some of the research I did around how each key values, like each of the, the biggest key value stores I could find, I probably missed a couple, but enough to be a representative sample, I think how they all do compare and swap operations and what would be kind of the the lowest common denominator thing there. So um, that's where we're at with YZ key value. Once that's in, um, I have heard back from some of the Fermion folks are implementing it that they hadn't implemented like the cursor stuff and list keys yet. And I know in some of the Wasm Cloud providers, we don't have those yet. So I'd want to make sure we have those implementations in place. But once we have those kind of little, those are just little kinks. And if we can iron those out, um, we can probably have that ready for 022 or 023 um, 
I just know there's a lot of a lot of other effort going in as well to some of the like wazi clocks and a couple other things. So we'll just kind of have to, you know, slot in in the right space. Um, but those will be happening and then we'll get the big release probably sometime in the first half of next year for the like full async and futures and a way better HTTP interface um, come 0 0.3. So uh, that's that's the state of those two. Um, messaging. I'm doing, oh, go ahead. I'll pause there. Go ahead, David. So I have, uh, I've heard some feedback from some folks about wanting to have, uh, the async structures in place prior to preview three for the WASI cloud core or the, however we want to say this, like the key value store and other, uh, interfaces that have implications for cloud, uh, services. Um, if anybody isn't familiar with this, those those structures uh, provide you know async and streaming uh, support. Whereas in preview three, the the goal is to have um, kind of native uh, async and, and streaming. So, uh, for example, in HTTP, the WASI HTTP, you can see in the structures you have an incoming request uh, response. You have an incoming structure and an outgoing structure. Uh, because you have to structure that, you have to build these structures in such a way that you can't reuse the same structure for input and output. It makes it a little bit more complex to design these structures. Um, so I'm curious what your thoughts are. If you feel like the interfaces are okay for preview two, and let's go and make those big changes when you get to preview three, or do you have a higher complexity for streaming interface interfaces and structures that are associated with that and then have less changes or just cover them up with you know some wrapping to make them okay and adaptable for preview three yeah i figure anything here will be adaptable so i'm shooting for the preview two stuff because i don't want to hold up on any feet like because there's a lot of things to clean up but for the most part in the WASI cloud interfaces, I've tried to avoid anything that involves streaming. The obvious exception is blob store because it's a blob. And so you can't really get around that one. Um, but that's why list keys uses a cursor rather than streams. We could, for example, adapt that. That'll probably be the biggest change in the WASI key value interface for a 0 0.3 is changing that to be using a futures type thing. And then it will change out from a cursor to just awaiting for the next value until you get them all. But for now, we kept the stream out of it just to keep it simple. Um, and then the yeah, blob store would be the one that might have the biggest changes because I'm not sure who who has or hasn't seen the draft of the HTTP 0 0.3. Uh, it's beautiful. I'm going to link it in here for those who want to look at it. It looks way more like what you'd expect. Um, so like you get a request and you return your response. Um, and I think that that is going to be the kinds of changes that will happen down the line here. Um, but yeah, that's where, I, where that's where I'm at with it. I don't think there's going to be major changes and any major changes. Um, I'm actually planning on using the WASI cloud ones, though they'll, they'll probably do it for the other things as well to have like the adapter for things that are running the previous interface, like 0 0.2 stuff to be 0 0.3. But that's the, the cool part about all this. You can just keep adapting it. Um, without breaking anybody. So like, that's what we've been telling people who've been asking like similar questions around like, oh, I'm building a component. Um, how do I know? Like, I'm not gonna have to do a bunch of work. And so I tell them I'm like, hey, you can adapt that component forward as needed. Calvin, sir. Uh, just a quick question on the uh... Uh, compare and swap on the WASI key value. So if if the uh, it it does it compare the old value and fail if the old value is not uh, matching. Yes, that correct. Okay. That's what it. That's what I went down to eventually. Like it seemed to boil down to just the fact that some things use like a, an ID or a token that's used to swap it out, and some people do direct comparisons, and some people do comparisons within a transaction. So it, I, it figured like it would be much easier to to just have it be the compare the value. Um, 
it might be less efficient for some use for some things, but like, I, I can't think of a way around it that can be generic enough that, to be implemented by everything else. Cool. Thanks for clarifying. I'm going to have to take a look at a little closer at that. Yeah, I'm open for any ideas, David. So if you've got any brilliant ideas, please drop it in there because I am all ears. Um, I, you can look at all the research I did and which which data store does which thing. I pretty much did like all the major cloud providers, all the major well-known open source projects and so on, like, and said, okay, what do y'all do? And I looked for each thing and I listed what type of thing they do in each case. So this seems to be the best compromise, but I also am only one person. So have at it. Um, that's why I bring these things up here. Uh, Cause I want to make sure we have some extra eyes on it. Um, Okay, so the other one that I want to keep people aware of in the WASI cloud space is there are, this is probably the second to last PR um, we'll need. Now, you'll notice that some of these might not move because, so David's here, he's one of the champions of a lot of these, but um, uh, Joe is not here. He's out on vacation right now. So um, we want to make sure he's around to to be around to uh, review some of these. But this is the um, cleaning up the blob store interface based off some feedback we got from a lot of um, users who are using it inside WASM cloud. Um, we already support the current form from Maine. And so we got some feedback there, plus um, some additional changes around like having actual timestamps rather than our own fake timestamps. So this depends on WASI clocks, um, which I think is important here because created at and all those kind of things are generally important for the blob stores. Um, there'll be some additional follow-ups around maybe a, a concrete error type and then um, a... Uh, oh yeah, and request types so like when you're you can set a content type and SHAs and all that kind of stuff um, when you're sending the blob. So those are the two other changes I'm going to make. I have not opened those yet. I might open it as a stacked PR on top of this one sometime this week. Um, but I just want to keep people aware of that too, um, so that you can take a look and let me know if you have any any big problems. But this should also I think get it ready to be moved to phase two. Um, so just a uh, just bringing that up there as well. Um, sorry, go ahead, Calvin, if you have a question on that. Yeah, I I never got around to uh, this conditional thing, but I don't know what your thoughts are on on that uh, conditional requirements. Yeah. I actually, so Robin looked into this a little while ago, and there's a lot of blob stores that don't support the if match condition. Um, there are, I had pulled up in the Wasm Cloud Slack, I think is where we had this conversation, and I can figure it out, but... Uh, if yeah, it, it looked like S3 supported on the get, but not the put, which I found very strange, but. Yeah, so like, I'm fine possibly adding it down the line. I don't think it needs to be in V1, but I was wrong about that with compare and swap. So if somebody has thoughts on that, um, Calvin linked the issue in here as well, and we can drop it in the notes. Um, if you're like, no, 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 like I absolutely must have this, like come drop your use case in that issue because I think we can wait on that if possible, because it's going to be a little bit more complex to adapt on top of, especially because some I know some blob stores don't support it. Do you think this is a use case for feature flags on the the annotation on the wit? Do we have the feature flags yet? I thought those hadn't landed. Yeah, yeah. So it was added in the um you know the I, recent WASI release. Uh, I thought those were just the since unstable. Gates. So it's an or. Um, so you can do a feature flag, I think as that's my understanding is that it, you can, you can enable things with a feature flag. Um, I don't know if, yeah, I, I, I'm just asking the question if this is a good use case for it, potentially. I'm, I'm almost wondering if this fits similarly into some of the brainstorming we had, like around request reply and messaging, which is obviously not there yet, but like we have the idea of saying it could be a separate interface that you could um use the like if match and all those things with and we because it's a separate interface that way something can opt in or opt out and be able to within like the actual wit and the world yeah. say like i export this mm -hmm. um so that would be the way i would prefer to work around it instead of features because like um yeah that so it just it just allows the thing to indicate like the 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 thing that's hosting it to indicate what it can actually do 
Yeah. So my, my only thoughts on this particular thing with the conditional requirements is without this functionality, you can't really do transactional updates to a blog store because yeah. this is a hard requirement. Like you have to, you need this mechanism and that'll, that bottlenecks you on a large number of use cases with blob stores, not having that functionality. And I, I, I get the, I, the I get that, but I also just know that yeah. no, like not everybody has it. So that's the part I can't, I can't reconcile. So I'm fine. I think it'd be best as like an additional interface is what I would recommend. Um, do, do, do you think that I'm, I'm kind of curious, like how we should like think about these, these types of scenarios where, it should be like a feature flag or some sort of like error, like runtime error or just be completely left out. Like just conceptually, like how we should deal with this, like, you know, thing that's mostly supported by most blob stores, but not everybody. I mean, I'm pretty pragmatic. I could go, I think there could be different scenarios. Like for example, if something supported by like 95% of things, I think having like an error variant of unsupported might be fine, for example, um, in some of these. Um, I have to go do the, I'll go have to look this up again. Or if you want to look it up, Calvin, that'd be even better and like find out which blob stores support which thing. Um, but if it's if it's a decent chunk, even if it's not like 50-50, that's where I prefer the interface way because for me, that's the most expressive. I mean, I understand the thing for like, for like feature gates or whatever, but I think the most expressive is something being able to, you you can introspect a, a WebAssembly component, identify if it's using that, and as a host, be able to say, I do not support that functionality because I'm not exporting that interface to you. And I think that that is a, um, a really good way for like, a, to, to handle like automation and erroring and handling those kind of things, especially when you're you're running this as probably someone who doesn't even know what the incoming workload is going to be and seeing like what is supported. So that like, so far I've really liked that path. That doesn't mean it's the only path. Um, but I think I'd prefer doing that if we can, but I also need to check what the support matrix is for if match. Cause I think so, it was some of the big ones that didn't have it. Like I think the, like Google's storage didn't have it or something. Uh, Google, I, I think Google had it. It, it was it, the big one is S3, <laughs> which is like, <laughs> Um, and, and it was, it was strange because it added on get, but not put and like, it's us in the wrong spot <laughs> because there's a timing issue. If you do a get first and you know, cause you can't do a transactional update. So it, it was, it was strange. Um, but maybe I missed it, but that's what I, when I was digging into it, S3 was the one that was the problem that I saw. It seems like there should be a transactional update. <clears throat> it's maybe it's just how and the how is a little bit different. I'm not sure I follow the question, David. But, oops. What I was saying is, um, Perhaps there's a different how, um, meaning like, okay, so I'm not going to give you the time for if matches. Um, you know, here's a nice HTTP way to do it. Uh, if matches, okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do some other thing where, you know, uh, you provide me uh, the clock time or, or whatever the clock tick was when this, the, the version of this thing in the body as opposed to like the if matches header. Yeah, I I I tried to look through the docs and I I could not figure out how they are missing this on the put. <laughs> it it seems so strange to me. Yeah. So let's have the conversation in that in that uh issue. Calvin, just so we, I mean, because we could probably dig around yeah. forever, but let's dig around, see who supports what, and make a decision based off of that.
Okay. I, I will continue. I'll, I'll take a look at that and also see if I can stuff it out. I, I haven't worked with S3 in a little bit. So, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, let's see. Anything else we want to cover under the Wesley Cloud update? Taylor, is that uh, silence meaning you want to move forward? Yep, we're good. Okay, cool. Um, updating deliverables OCI page with implementers. Taylor. Yeah, I just bring it up here. We kind of already talked about it in the channel. Um, if you're in the working group Wasm channel around adding implementers for the OCI stuff. Um, I just want to make sure like I listed a few of the ones in there and just give people the chance to I know that it's either very close or landed, James. I haven't been keeping track of the PR on um, uh, Runwazi. So I just wanted to make sure that we're okay. And if I missed anything in the Slack message about which um, projects I should list initially when I go open a PR there around implementers. Sorry, where is the list that you have currently? It's in Slack. So if we, oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, missed, in the yeah, that. in the working group Wasm, awesome. it is. Um, uh, let's see. Right now, it'll be run Wasi. Um, once that's merged in, or if it's already there, um, Wasm Cloud, Wasm Package Tools, and Cargo Component all have it. Um, so that would be the uh, initial list, and then anyone else who starts to implement that standard can, or that spec can. Uh, open a PR request, we put that on there. So we know we can just kind of keep an eye, uh, keep track of where all the work's at. It's more of a reporting things just so people know like, hey, we didn't just like throw this, like eat this into the void and then nobody did anything with it. Want to show them like, no, like people are actually doing stuff with it. Sounds good. Um, Run Runwazi will be dependent on the container D side. So um, we have a little tool that will package it up. And so I don't know if that continue, technically counts. Um, and that's that PR that we mentioned about, about merging. Um, but it I doesn't, mean, it's a, but it won't consume it. it. Um, it'll be partially implemented, I guess. I can follow up with you on that. I think it'll still count, but we'll just follow up and check. Hey, okay, that was it. For that side, David. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Um, so uh, I guess let's move on to the next thing. Um, so uh, part of what we do is we are, you know, blending as much as possible uh, Kubernetes and making uh, uh, Kubernetes feel as uh, web assembly feel as needed in Kubernetes as possible. So um, Part of uh, that is how, how do we how do we use identities and um, been thinking about that a little bit in spin and how workload identities would work with uh, container to shim runtimes and then uh, WebAssembly workloads as they're being executed. So um, part of that is in the skip that uh, I have linked. And this is just a draft. Uh, I guess I'll share. Um, so um, this is just a draft of like cloud identity and access management within Spin Cube, and Spin Cube is, has an operator that reconciles uh, CRDs that look roughly like this. Uh, so you can see Spin operator v1 alpha, Spin app name. Uh, image to a OCI artifact containing a WebAssembly uh, component, uh, number of replicas, and executor. And the executor there is the uh, container D spin shim or shim spin. Um, so basically, uh, we're going to run and then KWASM or the runtime class manager uh, provisions uh, the executor onto nodes for this to run on and uh, manages uh, runtime classes within Kubernetes. So um, how do we 
when we're accessing key value service, we don't necessarily want to bake into runtime configuration uh, secrets. Uh, we don't necessarily want to use secrets if we don't have to. So um, many of the cloud providers offer ODIC integration, OIDC integration to uh, their identity providers. Um, in the uh, such as like uh, uh, workload identity in, in Microsoft uh, Azure, uh, you can, let me see, basically, ah, here we go. So um, it integrates with Azure Active Directory Entra um, for OIDC uh, integration so that you can authenticate uh, using a Kubernetes service account uh, to then tr you know, negotiate that for a JWT, a JWT token, JWT, uh, to use to access Azure resources. So um, with this service account negotiation, um, you can then use that as your identity. And this can simplify um, identities for uh, applications. WebAssembly should also be part of that. So um, part of what this skip does is it describes how to lay out identity providers for spin applications. Um, and so uh, let's see, basically uh, this thing unwinds, this CRD unwinds to um, service count definition and then service count definition as well as a deployment, um, which looks like that. And then uh, through uh, environment variables that are set by a webhook, uh, mutating webhook uh, for workload identity, uh, those um, environment variables are then used within a spin application to authenticate to key value storage um, or uh, let's see, um, eVault or secret storage. And those are uh, Azure resources. So the application doesn't need to uh, bake in any secrets and it just kind of works. Um, and we'd like to see that. I, I think I think that's, I think we have like a clean enough slate in WebAssembly that we can start to bake these practices in early so that we can start you know, getting people used to this idea that this is this is the right way to use identities if possible, and you know, not bake in secrets into their code. I don't know. Any questions? So, um, the the JWT is being exposed to the the guest app, and and it's making a request to the thing, or is it being is that being handled by the host as part of like an outbound authentication? Excellent question. Uh, so the the webhook, uh, the mutating webhook uh, takes a service account token and then translates that into an Azure federated token. So basically uh, it, it does a ODIC negotiation and presents that as an environment variable. If you were to expose all environment variables to all components running in the you know in the guest, then they would have access, and that might be a scary idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, if you want to say and and uh, spins runtime config has this uh, ability to say, hey, I want to put, I want to give access to these environment variables in these components. And so uh, you should, it should be a denial and only allow list the things that you absolutely want to be in certain components. Is the way to think about this is like service kind of bindings on a wet level of like, like the authentication is being happened uh, outside of the guest and you're just exposing that service? You could. I could also see it as I have a component that I'm going to allow access to an environment variable, but I'm not going to allow another component access to that. So let's imagine I have like, I don't know, my user service component, 
and that user service component uses key value store. I'm going to allow it to have access to key value store, uh, to the Azure credential for key value store. And then it can use that uh, to talk to key value. But the way it works right now in Spin is, is none of that stuff's actually in a component, right? It all talks back to the host. When you use key value, it's talking back to the host side and saying, okay, hey, I'm going to go and, you know, establish a Rust Azure client for Cosmos DB using this credential. And that's all happening in the host. Eventually, I think that should get into components, right? We should be able to use like sockets or some lower level constructs to be able to put all of this uh, into a component as opposed to all on the host side. So wait, so you're saying that components would have like to access some sort of connect method? and provide credentials? I think they could, yeah. I, so that's actually where I'm quite strongly opposed to it. One of the key things okay. of why I've been um, working on WebAssembly for so long is that separation of concerns. That's why we've done, so like that's why Spin does things through the hosts. It's why Wasm Cloud does things through providers, which are just essentially host plugins. Um, because now you're just, when you when you do things like that, okay, now what are you going to do for isolation? And what are you going to do for those those things? You essentially end up with a, a container without the containment because you don't have the, like that's the whole purpose, like a container, anything in a container can access a socket and all that. And it gets covered from a security standpoint by wrapping it in, you know, namespaces, you know, that kind of stuff, which is what a container is, right? And if you do that from a WebAssembly point of view, if you're then exposing a like direct low level socket connection, it also, I mean, you're gonna have that problem right there where it's a security issue because, okay, now you have a thing that can access a system resource. I mean, you still have to grant the socket to it when you start it, but you're doing like low level yeah. socket connection things, which then you now have to secure all the other things coming out of it. Whereas, I mean, it also, in you start to get this other problem, which is the other thing I've always loved about WebAssembly is the non-functional requirement pollution. Um, one of the big things that always lands when we're talking to people um, out in the out in the WebAssembly community and people who are interested in it is the fact that like the, the log4j thing is what I always use because it's easily, most people know what happened there, um, but you can point out a bajillion different things. Um, if the log4j issue happens and now someone is making a essentially a log4j client connection inside of each of their, now you have to rebuild each of your components rather than fixing out like a host plugin or something else on that base level. And so to me, like exposing that like low level thing into a into an actual component is not a good idea because it violates the security sandbox model of, of Wasm. So that's kind of my approach there. Now, as for workload identities, like the general idea, I'm total like that makes total sense. I do have more concerns around the like trying to expose it all the way low level to a component. Sure. Um, and my counterpoint would be uh, I want to have a key value store interface with uh, components that implement um, many different key value stores. So mm -hmm. I want a Redis, I want a Cosmos DB. And I don't want your host to have a darn thing to do with it. That's host. That's why I say host plugins. Counterpoint is host plugins for that. That's why. Right. Like, but at that same point, you then have to figure out what the hell you just composed and then say, okay, cool. Let me see if I can figure out how I can compose my host too. So I compose an app. Now I'm going to compose a host to say, all right, this host plugin now does this for, uh, you know, this key value store. Uh, at the same, if we have sockets, why shouldn't we be able to use sockets? I, yeah, I understand saying, that. No, you, no, I'm it's saying you can't. Privileged. It's privileged. It's, it, the, it is privileged, but now you have to manage all the networking stuff around that. You have to manage um, all the security aspects of it. And then now you're recompiling clients into um, into components. Now, I there's you could say there's another way of doing this is you could have each of those clients be their own component and then compose it. That could be fine. But once again, the component itself should never be dealing with connection strings or whatever. That should be something you're configuring at the runtime, speci like specifically for that security reason, saying, okay, I am, when you're talking about the, oh, well, here's the host plugin and what connects, like using like what we do in Wasm Cloud, that's what we have a link definition for, which is literally just saying, here's the things, here's the configuration you're going to use. 
and that's entirely external and opaque to everything involved. Um, it's it's specific per host plugin essentially, and that's how how it does it. But like what we don't want is we don't want these like if you end up with the same thing. What's nice is if you have an HTTP service right now, the right WebAssembly, you just say I'm going to implement this handler. You don't have to say listen on this port, do this thing, set up these configurations. Here's like all the certificates. Here's all that. You don't have to worry about that anymore. You just say hey, I, I need something that gives this to me. And then ho a host can take care of that. And whether that host is delegating to a yeah, plugin or whatnot. Somebody has to worry about that at some point. Like yes. either you've created a host that does this or, uh, and I, I, I think, you know, yeah, the handler thing is really great for functions, but at some point people are going to want to compile their apps to WebAssembly. Like uh, they're going to want to take their Java app or .NET app, like their Go app and just say, hey, go target WebAssembly. Web Good. Yeah, so Good. I I get that. This is one of those hills I'll die on. So that's why you found that um found this here. But like the the thing for me is like that's the whole point of an interface. Um, if we're not using interface, like it does require change. And it, like I think by the time people would be to the point where like let me just compile this to WebAssembly, that does have its advantages. But the main like the main advantages to application developers comes from the component model and interfaces, not from the it's speedier, faster, whatever. That's a platform engineering concern, which it's an important and like it's the it's a big chunk of the equation, especially for a platform team. But for an app developer, that's not as the big of the of a concern. So when you code against these interfaces, it changes up which what your model is because rather than having this this like connection string and the cl specific client stuff, you're coding against the interface. And platform engineers can provide this is what we see already in action based on some of the stuff we've done with with people as they. They use some of the WASI cloud interfaces, which can be portable pretty much everywhere, but then they almost always define their own interface. And this is when you get into the whole platform engineering, you get the, the groups like Canoe and, and that kind of stuff going on right now. That's the kind of thing they're trying to find. Here's what our platform provides for you. And then rather than having to do all these like injecting of credentials and then they have to handle and read the right environment variable or use your SDK and pull those things in, you code against the interface. And so then everything goes through either direction through that interface. The, the configuration of that can be provided externally and handled by either party or both parties, but the business logic itself is only going against those components. And so I don't think somebody is going to have a lot of motivation to just like, unless they're tinkering, which I've done too, and just say, I want to take this application and I want to compile it to WebAssembly. Um, I think they're going to be like, I'm like, if I'm getting into WebAssembly, like, what's this component thing? What does that mean? Oh, it's an interface. Then use the interface. So like, that's um, where I'm, that's where I'm coming I, from. I, I think, I think you're going to build the best apps. I agree with that. Uh, I just think we also have to, you know, understand we're going to have to meet people where they're at. Um, and, and that's why I say meet know. them where they're at as a container. Like, I, like that's, I, I if you're going to take the leap and effort to go into WebAssembly, like it's going to be, I assume maybe in five years, maybe three, I can be hopeful, three years, we could get to a point where you can just say, here's my existing app and I'm just gonna rerun cargo build or you know, like the .NET build chain and it's just gonna poof, all work. Um, but like right now, like even just to compile to WebAssembly, there's certain things that don't necessarily work. Um, even if you're doing like web WebAssembly. And mm -hmm. so I don't think anyone's gonna just like go straight across like that. And yeah, meeting them where they're at is the, and yeah, that's what, Cal, that's what I was mentioning, Calvin, where like you could have a dependency that might have that client in it, but it would be a thing that would be composed in. And the, the main business logic still is just composed against the interface. And then this other component, you might be configuring or giving connection strings or doing that stuff inside of, but the business logic can be separated from that. Um, and like, yeah, it's a paradigm shift, but I mean, everybody learned how to build in containers. So, I mean, I it's a little bit more lifty shifty um, about that. So anyway, that that's where like the so the workload itself, like I said, the workload identity, obviously that's critical because you need that to be able to authorize it workloads inside of it. Like if that makes sense. The lower level goals and concerns of exposing this directly in a component, I'm less in favor of because of those things. We, we may end up with a nice ergonomic solution with API clients that you're kind of importing, like you're almost like native in your language though. So that yeah, may... that's, that's the cool stuff Calvin's working on. He's shown me some of the things.
That sounds neat. All right, we have uh, gone past our time. Um, I do appreciate the spirit of discussion and uh, it is always great to see everybody's faces and uh, chat. Um, thank you all. Uh, anything we want to walk away for, walk away with uh, any action items to take today? I had my action item, which I think we wrote down. Yep. Did we write down? Anyway, um, I, I will write it down here. I don't know if it's in there. It's probably worth mentioning that Wazi uh, did a release on Thursday. Um, oh, yeah. We got a Wazi zero. Two, zero 2 1, everyone. <laughs> it's going to be on timed releases now. I think every two months. Was it two months? Is it what we decided on? It, it, it's still filtering its way through tooling things. So um, I wouldn't rush out and try to use it. OK, I have added my to do. I will go ahead and reach out to Ricardo about that and see if we can get those things. So that's I know is the only for sure to do. Oh. And David, uh, please comment on that uh, blob store issue if you find something else on, on there. This is whiteboard to do. I like this. All right. You got it. All right, y'all, let's have a great day.